Howard Taylor is the creator, writer, and illustrator of Schlock Mercenary, a serial comic strip with over 25,000 daily readers at schlockmercenary.com. In his four decade sojourn on this planet, he has also been a rock musician, composer, record producer, drama geek, role-playing gamer, tech support weenie, public speaker, middle manager, marketing puke, <laughs> husband, and father. He's been cartooning full-time since September 2004, and he and his family have never been happier. He has uh, also been the, well, the co-recipient of the Webb's Web Cartoonist Choice Award in 2004, and was again nominated in 2005 and 2007. Today, he will address uh, the question of what is more important in creation, the, uh, the God-given God -given talents, or if you're more hardworking. So it's titled, Talent, Who Needs Talent? Howard. Okay. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, Trevor, could I get you to click for me? I'm sorry. I, we tried to get a little Bluetooth device to work, and if I walk over there every time I need a, a thing advanced, go ahead and click. All right. Here's the CV. That's Howard Taylor. 40 years old, married, four children, full-time indie cartoonist, high five-figure salary. I throw that out so that you know it's possible to make a living at this. Bachelor of Arts, BYU 1993 in music composition and sound recording technology. I don't do that anymore. Previous experience as a record producer, tech support weenie, inbound product marketing manager, and lots of other things. And I now have about nine years experience cartooning. And you can find more about me on Facebook, LiveJournal, Wikipedia, or just by Googling Howard Taylor. I am an e-famous i-celebrity. <laughs> Let's talk about some left-handed compliments. Did you get a haircut? You look thinner. Hey, you clean up pretty nice. Gorgeous photos. You must have a nice camera. Did you draw that? You are so talented. These so-called compliments that misplace the credit are actually insults. Next slide. Um, boy, you know, that photo is just, we can't do justice to that photo in a room that's lit this way. My friend Jancy took it, and it's gorgeous. She has a reasonably nice camera, but she's a really good photographer. Next picture. This shot that she took of a fountain. Again, gorgeous. And you can't see, oh, go back. Go back, go back. You can't see it really well in the washed out color here, but the plays of turquoise and blue here and here, I mean, I don't know how she captured that angle, but it's just a fantastic picture. All right, next one. And this is a picture that she took of a figurine that is an inch and a half tall. This is called macro photography, and the figurine was painted by my buddy Drew. Keep in mind, the figurine is an inch and a half tall. The eyes are less than a millimeter wide, okay? And people tell Drew, they look at this model, they look at this model, they look at him painting, they say, wow, you must have really expensive paint. <laughs> no, they say this, they say this. All right, next slide. The model in question, inch and a half, to, all right, I've told you that. Do you really think the quality of the paint job hinges on the paint? Next slide. Telling me I must be using really expensive paint is like telling a famous author she must have a really fancy typewriter. That's Drew ranting about painting and photography one day at Dragon's Keep, where I hang out a lot and do much of my penciling and inking. Um, next slide. If it's not the paint, what is it? Is it innate talent? Is it an artistic eye? Could it be the sculpt? Maybe he's got really good brushes, or perhaps he's spent 18 years painting really tiny things because he loves doing it, and he's finally good enough at it that people will pay him hundreds of dollars for something that is an inch and a half tall. We auctioned off a figurine that he painted, and it, it garnered, what, 300 bucks in the auction? Awesome. Next slide. Here's a picture of Schlock from March of 2000. That's 
a little more than, or a little less than nine years ago, nobody looks at this picture and says, oh, you are so talented. In fact, they look at this picture, Howard Taylor, age 31. I'm sorry, you look at that picture drawn by a 31-year-old and your thought is not, boy, he's got a lot of talent. Your thought is, dude, don't quit your day job. You know what? Four and a half years later, I quit my day job. Go ahead and hit the next slide. This one, and the color's washed out again, uh, drawn at age 39. Now I hear, wow, you are so talented. You know what? If I've got talent, it has nothing to do with how clean that picture ended up looking on the cover of the book. What it had to do with is the fact that I spent eight years learning to do this crazy thing that I do. Be careful what you wish for. I get people saying, boy, I wish I could draw like that. If you really wish you could draw like this, the wish o genie is going to force you to draw something every day for years and years and years. That's what you're really wishing for when you wish you could do something as well as somebody who's doing it in a way you admire. Next slide. Are you discouraged yet? Anybody? How many of you are college students? Show of hand. Students. How many of you working professionally in some field or another? A couple of hands. Awesome. Awesome. OK. Um, I remember graduating college 20 years ago. And uh, I remember thinking, wow. I want to hit the market, and I, you know, I've done all this studying. I'm ready. And what I'm here to tell you is you're not. I've just told you it's going to take longer than you thought it was. And the fact of the matter is it's going to take even longer than that in order to really hit the top of your game. You're graduating from college, and the people who are in the industry at the top of the game are looking at you and saying, yeah, kid, you might have talent. You might not. Don't quit your day job. Boy, you kind of suck at this. Well, the, the probationary period of your employment is six months long, and you're scratching your head and you're saying, why did I go to school for four years or six years or 10 years in order to learn how to do something that I'm told I suck at? Let's talk about some simple motivation. A study performed a while back on some fifth graders. I know, you're older than fifth graders. The study. Uh, the, uh, the researchers wanted to determine how effective one sentence of praise could be. It had to be the right sentence, though. They wanted to figure out how effective it was. And so they administered an IQ test, which was fairly simple. It was at the grade level for these kids. It was nothing they couldn't do. It, it wasn't especially challenging. And they divided the kids randomly into two groups. Whether the kids were smart or dumb or you know, whatever background they may have had was irrelevant. They randomly divided them into two groups. And one group, regardless of their score, they told them, good job. You must be smart at this. And the next group, they said, good job. You must have worked hard on this. Next slide. Both groups were then given a choice between taking a second harder test or a second easier test. The group that was told, you must have worked hard at this, they said, give me, give me the tougher test. I'm ready for it. And the group who was told, you must be smart, those kids took the cop out. They went with the easier test. Uh, percentages, OK, majority and 90%. Um, did any of you go to a gifted school? Any of you have experience in gifted programs in schools? There's a couple of hands, a couple of hands. I went to a gifted school when I was in grade school from about fifth grade to about ninth grade. <coughs> and the school was called Pineview, and they had what we called the Pineview Shuffle, which was the smart kids who have been told by their parents and their teachers and everybody else that they are smart kind of shuffle through the reading and whatever else, trying to do as little work as possible in order to get a passing grade. When I left the gifted program and went into a regular high school where your teacher really doesn't care how gifted you may or may not be, and the class sizes are larger, and you know, you're just another nose-picking moron in the American history class, um, it was a rude awakening. 
I could no longer shuffle through things, and I learned this lesson the hard way over the next four years. I did not get fantastic grades. I did not work hard. I continued to think, well, I'm gifted, and I just need to put a little more effort into this, and maybe I can pull it off. Okay? Not so. It needed a lot more effort, and I'm still learning that lesson. Next slide. 